In this video, we'll set up a linear algebra problem by hand and solve it in MATLAB. The linear algebra unit in this class isn't very MATLAB heavy. The coding is much simpler compared to previous units. The hardest part of this unit is setting up the problem by hand. Linear algebra problems involve solving many equations simultaneously to compute many unknown quantities. Solving a linear algebra problem can be distilled into the following steps. First, you want to analyze a system holistically. What type of system are you analyzing? You can have an electrical system, a mechanical system, and so forth. This will determine what physical laws or equations you need to use. For example, if you're given a circuit problem, you should immediately recognize that you'll have to use KVL or KCL to solve the problem. Likewise, when given a structural mechanics problem, you'll probably have to use Newton's laws. Next, you want to apply the relevant engineering laws to obtain a series of equations. Depending on the system, you can have as little as two equations. You could also have thousands. Third, you want to organize your equations until they're in AX equals B form. More on this in a bit. Fourth, you can solve your system either by hand or in MATLAB. I always recommend using MATLAB. And finally, you want to check your results by applying a series of test cases. Once you've obtained your equations from step two, you need to format it so MATLAB can solve it. This is done by reorganizing your equations into what I call AX equals B form. I like to use this graphic to show the relationships between A, X, and B. B is a column vector of constants representing the forcing functions imposed on the system. X is a column vector of the independent variables representing the response of the system when the system is subjected to the forcing functions. And A is a square matrix of coefficients which represents the system parameters. The entries in A represent how parts of the system interact with each other. This makes a lot more sense with an example, so let's jump into one. A classic physics problem involves a set of ropes supporting a mass. In this problem, we want to find the tensions T1 and T2 such that the system is in static equilibrium. For the sake of time, I'll skip the derivations, but if you balance the forces in both directions, you end up with these two equations. These can be solved simultaneously for the two unknowns, T1 and T2. Before you do anything else, I highly recommend rearranging the equations so that each one lists the variables in the same order. The worst thing you can do at this stage is rush. When you solve these problems, you want to be methodical. A small mistake can quickly cascade. Equation 1 lists T1 and then T2, so let's follow that order. And just for clarity, I'll rewrite the equations. Equation 2 has a T1 but not a T2. I'll manually write in 0 T2 just to make everything uniform. This is another really good organizational tip. Okay, now we need to rearrange these equations in AX equals B form. The B vector is the easiest to make. All we need to do is move every constant over to the right-hand side. The first equation doesn't have any constants on the left, so we're good to go. The second equation has a w, so we need to move that over. And this forms our column vector b. The left-hand side of the equation already has each variable and their coefficients in order. This is why we rearranged things not too long ago. The x vector is just the variables in order, so in this case it's t1 and t2. That means the a matrix is just the coefficients attached to each term, so a equals cosine of 45 and negative 1 for the first row, and sine 45 and 0 in the second row. This is another reason why I wrote 0t2, so it's more readily apparent in the A matrix. 
And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll code this in MATLAB. See you soon.